the European colonists took over and started calling themselves Americans and started changing the history saying that they brought us here, we were always here. You've got pyramid kuntas in Central and South America that are older than the pyramids in Giza in Misraim that the people call Egypt. Older. You've got civilization principles that are here in Lower Egypt that you call Kentucky and Tennessee area that is older than they are in what you call Egypt. But those things are held secret because they don't want these people to know that they're the heirs apparent to this land. So they branded them Negro, Black, and Colored to cut off the linear history. So when the people think they're Negro, Black, and Colored, they can't tie to the illustrious history of the founders of civilization. And as a matter of fact, they keep trying to leave and everybody else trying to come here because they don't even know that this is the hub, the North. This pyramid is the second largest, well, it was the second largest pyramid by volume on the planet. It's now the third largest. And I don't know if you can get an appreciation for the scale of this, but I like this picture because you see these tiny dots, that's people. Just to show you how massive this thing is. And unlike the pyramids of Egypt, the pyramids built by the Olmecs were meant for you to mount. They were meant for you to climb them and go up there and behold the greatness of your ancestors. This was built by black people. The same stone heads I just showed you, white archaeologists have confirmed that they were also the builders of these pyramids. This pyramid is 20,000 years old. And it is built from granite. And it is still standing unlike the World Trade Center. <laughs> This used to be the biggest pyramid on the planet by volume. It's called the Pyramid of the Sun. It's on the same complex. This was built by black people. It is massive. It's called the Pyramid of the Sun because it is designed to align with solar phenomena. This is the new king of the hill. Remember I said to you, this one was the biggest pyramid on the planet. That was until six years ago when they stumbled onto this. This is called El Mirador. It is in Mexico. Mirador is a Spanish word for veranda or rooftop because they discovered that when you stand on the top of this, you can see for miles. And guess what? When they stood on the top of it, now this had been covered up by jungle. Just to show you, imagine how old this is. This is real. This is not from a, a movie. This is not special effects. This is an actual photograph. All right, this pyramid is massive. You can't even see the base of it. It is so old that trees were growing up from inside it. This is in Guatemala, Central America, and this whole area was covered up by jungle for thousands of years. They don't even know exactly how old this is. But so far, they've, dated it, they've estimated it's 26,000 years. There are potentially thousands of massive pyramids in that one city complex alone. Built 26,000 years ago, at least, built by the Olmec sheep, black people. So that's the first lie about Arawaks. The second lie, Cristobal Colon was a mercenary. This is the man that you know as Christopher Columbus. Anybody ever wondered why suddenly in 1492 all these Europeans decided that they were going to jump on boats and start exploring everywhere? <laughs> well, there's a reason. There's always smoke, what, fire behind the smoke. In 1491, one year before his first voyage, there was a war between the Moors and the white Europeans. Actually, that war had been going on for a very long time. The Moors had ruled Western Europe for 700 years. But in 1491, when Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand defeated them at Granada in Spain, Pope Innocente, I love how the popes always have nice names, Pope Innocent. Pope Innocent VIII legalized the enslavement of black people all over the world. And the theft of their lands and their wealth by white Europeans. This happened in 1491, and then in 1492, the voyages all started, right? You had Portugal, Spain, the Dutch, France, and Britain. Everybody just started exploring the so-called New World. 
How can it be the new world, by the way, if it's older than your world? I mean, I just showed you a 26,000 year old pyramid in the new world. Anyway, Columbus's first voyage was a military reconnaissance mission. Everybody understand what that is? When you want to wage a war with an enemy that you're not familiar with, you send somebody to scope them out. See how fortified their, their nations are, see what kind of weaponry they have. And we know this for a fact because he only took three ships. Everybody knows the name of those three ships, right? Nina, Pinta, Santa Maria. And he only took about 80 crewmen. But when he came back in 1502, no, it's all 1496, 17 warships and 1,300 soldiers. And those ships were carrying cannons, those ships were carrying armory, but he was just an explorer. Oh, yeah, this dude's lit. Of tonight's bold journey is John Stevenson. Deep in the jungles of French Guiana, Mr. Herman Jessen, the Amazon trader, makes his way up the Moroni River, aided by friendly natives, the primitive Indians along its banks, for their spears, baskets, and primitive artifacts, and often has to eat only what nature provides. Our boat was 50 foot long and four feet wide, and there were four of us going on this long trip up the Moroni River. Nessie! The Amazon is a colossal mystery. First of all, to give some basic figures, the Amazon basin is huge. Within it, five and a half million square kilometers uh, remains almost entirely unstudied by archaeologists. Five and a half million square kilometers is the size of the entire Indian subcontinent. So oh. it's like saying, we've done world archaeology, but we've just ignored India. You know, <laughs> the Amazon rainforest is literally being cut down. And in that cutting down process has emerged things that shouldn't be there at all. Uh, for example, evidence that large cities flourished in the Amazon. Incredible cities, advanced arts and crafts, millions of people, a thriving culture. And then in the last decade, as the clearances of the Amazon have proceeded, we've begun to see the traces of those cities. Within a 50 years, they were completely overgrown by the jungle, and that's why they were not seen by the explorers who came in 100 years later. But now the jungle's being cleared, those cities are emerging. The Amazon is... Amazon and in South America and that there used to be 20 million people that lived in the Amazon and they died off because of sickness. Apparently Europeans when they came in like the 1500s they would tell these incredible stories about these huge civilizations in the Amazon but then when explorers came back 200 years later there was nothing there and they wow. were like this is crazy they, they lied they must have lied but it turns out they didn't lie smallpox ran through the fucking jungle and White killed people. everybody. We did it and then these, the jungle just overtook these cities. And now they're finding these cities with something called LIDAR. They use these planes and they circle over this area or helicopters, whatever the fuck they do. And they shoot this shit down, this LIDAR. It's like laser radar. And it gives you a detailed image of what's below the surface. Yes. And it shows them all these crazy structures, all these roadways and irrigation systems and circles inside of a square. And millions of people probably live there. Fuck in the Amazon.